Hello everybody, it's Loomer. I'm here in Los Angeles here with Jeffrey O'Hallam. Of course, uh, we've done some podcasts in the past. Um, he was the lead writer on Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, uh, Far Cry 3, Child of Light, and most importantly, at least for this year, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, this will be more of kind of just like a general Jeffrey interview. We'll maybe get a couple Syndicate questions in, but um, you know, we were talking recently uh, on the Dead Kings podcast about what you're looking forward to in, in gaming. And um, I remember VR was like a really big thing. And I was really curious, like if you've been to the show floor and like what you've seen, uh, what excites you and uh, if I guess VR stuff too. And, uh, I think it's kind of confirmed that for me, um, after I tried, you know, Oculus and other <laughs> VR platforms, um, it's like that's a super stimulus and I can wander you can enter like a VR space and it's like uh, stepping into a room in an art gallery like you could have a single room mm -hmm. that, that has a mood to it that changes how you feel about your day just by entering that space and like looking around and exploring it um, and games on the consoles just don't have that effect yeah. and so it's like it's like uh, trying 3d and then going back to 2d or something oh uh, yeah <laughs> i'm like i just can't wait to um explore more vr projects and um see what the language of that space is you know like every uh medium has a language and video games on your tv have you know a way that, that you interact with the controller in order to interface with that game and there's a certain level of interest that that uh creates and so like to hold player interest, you have to shoot like 500 or 1,000 people over the course of a game yeah. <laughs> um, because that feels good to our brains. You know, we're playing and it's like we're engaged that way. And if I, I'm just walking down a hallway and I'm, I'm looking at things on the walls, that gets boring very quickly. But that didn't used to be the case. You know, with a game like Myst, people could explore infinitely and then there were all these puzzles. And because it was the first 3D game, uh, we weren't bored as easily. Yeah. And so now I feel like um, when we enter a virtual world, then we'll be able to discover a whole new language of interactivity that's much more subtle, where I can go, you know, go up to like a rocking chair where someone's rocking and I can stop, like I can tip it back over and see their reaction. And that will be yeah. so much more interesting in VR than it will be in, uh, in a game. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you talk about the language of like VR. I tried the um, the brand new Oculus this morning actually uh, when the show opened, and I tried Edge of Nowhere, which is the Insomniac games like uh, like Avalanche, and then you're like in a cave. It's really cool, like really nice art design, really stunning. And I noticed things like um, you know because it's a third person VR game, it's like it's kind of a weird. Uh, it, it's it's a little weird because like you're not necessarily seeing what the character sees or what the character is doing even um, and they would have they would kind of force you into these situations where the, the camera is always fixed and so they would put you in these situations where like there's a right turn up ahead but the camera only makes you look straight and so they basically force you to turn your head like to be like oh yeah I'm using VR let me go look at what's over there I can just look over there and it almost feels like like it was used to really good effect at some point at some point you drop a tor like he drops a torch and you can watch it and it goes down like it's really deep like hole and it's really crazy um but, and then it sometimes it feels like almost a little heavy-handed like hey this is vr you should be doing this now you should be doing yeah so it's, it's really interesting have you seen um have you had a chance yet to try anything at this year's e3 i haven't because uh the problem with trade shows in vr yeah. is that uh, they're gigantic, gigantic lines. It's really not made as a group experience. And so yeah. that, that's going to change things in the future. Like if it becomes a major platform, then the way that we interact with it will be very different. But I think that um, in terms of the, the language side, what you're talking about is like, okay, so if I have a third-person game and my character's doing something, I can like stop and look back at something going on in the sky. Yeah. And what I'm doing as the character and looking up at the sky can talk to each other, yeah. you know, and if one thing, like I'm watching something really cheerful in front happen and then I turn and there are these clouds coming and there's lightning in the clouds and they're getting closer <laughs> and closer, then I feel tension mm -hmm. that that scene in front of me and that I'm watching doesn't create. Yeah. So that this cloud will contribute tension to the scene I'm watching. And so yeah that kind of uh, 360 um, communication is yeah. new 
and we're gonna as creators we're gonna have to discover how to you know take advantage of it like you said with the torch thing is it like a good use of it versus bad uses of it yeah in the, in the case of the demo there was one point where i looked off at a monster that was going off away and then while i was looking over my character walked off the edge and died <laughs> so it's like i don't know if that's my fault or if it's the it's another kind of like stumbling block of vr type stuff but it's just it's it's all just really new and it's it's kind of exciting you know yeah and i think <laughs> in the long run you know uh because spaces can be much more economical since you you just could enter one room and have the time of your life instead of having to have space <laughs> after space after space which you yeah. have to do on a tv in order to keep it interesting because of that i think as developers we can spend a lot more time on the the language of the interactivity as opposed to on the you know gigantic scope of the game so i look forward to that you know it's like you can have a game where you assassinate 10 people and it's about gaining access to their really uh, well-guarded locations yeah. and that each person then each kill will feel really meaningful and maybe will feel disturbing the way it would in real life yeah so I look forward to that you know rather yeah. than having I, I almost think that some kind of systemic approach in that case might uh, disappear you know games are very system based right now very open world and kind of let's see how uh, you know the driving system interacts with um, you know the the ocean like what happens if I drive a car to the ocean and how's the ocean react and all that I think that'll still be there but you can have a much more tailor-made experience in VR yeah. you know because of the smaller scope yeah great um, anything else in particular you're excited for at E3? I mean the great thing is seeing all of these female protagonists right yeah it's it's been a really great E3 for female protagonists. Um, you know, not just in Syndicate, obviously, but like uh, in all the new, the new uh, uh, Guerrilla Games. Uh, what is it like the robot dinosaur type stuff? And uh, you post -apocalyptic. know, apocalyptic. Yeah, post apocalyptic but dinosaur and happier. Eevee. I'm sorry, not Eevee. Um, Dishonored 2 looks amazing. I can't wait for that game. If you're an Assassin's Creed fan, you haven't played Dishonored. I think you should definitely give it a shot. It's very, very good. Yeah, Emily. Well done, Emily. Yes, Emily, of course. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. So why don't we move on a little bit, um, talk about, you know, Syndicate's been kind of what you've been doing for a while now. Um, where are you in the process with the Syndicate right I, now? I'm actually, like, uh, between every day uh, leaving the show, I go home and I write uh, mission names. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's getting there. I mean, there are, like, a thousand-some pages of menus in the game. Okay. So uh, right now we're finalizing all of that and... Uh, I'm telling you, I, I'm sure people think that there's some like computer program that does the menus in, <laughs> in Korea or something, right? Yeah. And it's not like, true. <laughs> it's all, every single line of text in the game is done by writers. Yeah. Um, and it's not some other outsourced group of writers. It's yeah. us. We wrote, you know, um, I'm the lead and I have a team of writers and, and we do the, the game script and then we do the menus. Yeah. So speaking of the team, um, you know, since it's since Syndicate was announced and the last time we talked, um, it's come out that you were the lead writer of Syndicate, of course. Um, and Corey May is returning to the franchise after you know a couple games absence um, as the narrative director. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, "Oh, that's really cool." Wait, what's the what's the difference between like the lead writer and like so? I was wondering if you could kind of ex, you know kind of explain a little bit the difference between like what the two of you do. Um, I feel like it's it's a little bit good cop bad cop, but it's also more like um, as a lead writer, it's my job to make certain that the script is incredible. So um, you know that all the writing is at its best, and that you know all the characters are being conveyed properly, and that the game is economical. Hang on one second. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll turn that later. Okay, See, sure. we're live. That yeah, proves we're that we're live. We're live, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's not a pre-rendered demo of Mom, animatronics. Yeah. Mom, I'll call you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I wrote, like, I started from scratch with the beginning and the end of the game and then the plot, and then the other writers would do drafts of the middle and then I would polish those drafts and make certain that they, and add things and subtract things and make it all fit. Yeah. And so uh, it, I'm focusing on kind of the creative blueprint. And then Corey makes sure that what we're doing interfaces with the entire team that's making the game. And so he'll come to me and be like, okay, the level designers need this. Can you get this thing done? 
and then he'll also talk to them and be like Jeffrey is saying that this is really important for making the <laughs> the characters work so can we please like figure out how to compromise on that so he's really you know he has been um, we work together on AC2 and this experience has been very exciting because he's been uh, making sure that you know in a game of this scope um, all kinds of uh, changes happen abruptly or unexpectedly or someone you know in the far reaches of a dark room changes something yeah. and then no one else knows about it and so because of Corey I think communication between the writers and the rest of the team has been much stronger Oh, that's great. I imagine he's still kind of doing his uh, kind of Alice role a little bit, too, I imagine. Just like, you know, going over the script and giving his input, of course. Oh, yeah, he course. gives notes, yeah. of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he was actually the primary source. I mean, when yeah. I, once I did the, my pass of everything that had been written and made sure I was happy with everything, then he gave me notes. Yeah. And the historian... Uh, that we worked with also gave me notes okay. and so then I decided whether to incorporate those notes and so it's a very uh, empowering process you know it's not that I have to take a note okay. but sure. he's, he is incredible he's just uh, he, if you ever if anyone ever gets a chance to work with him it's, it's really uh, a great relationship because um, he only suggests things when he really thinks it's important mm -hmm. and he is uh, not egotistical about it at all and oftentimes he says you know I may be wrong but here's a suggestion yeah <laughs> and so you know it, he really acknowledges that writing and uh, you know anything in, in art or entertainment is very subjective and oftentimes uh, creators have a unique perspective or a reason why they do something and he respects that and vice versa like he you know has things that he wants yeah. um, to happen in the game and I, I love incorporating them because they just make the mix even better and you know um, it's really been an incredible collaboration and it, it you know I think that players who are fans of AC2 will find a lot here to like awesome that's so great I'm really glad both of you are involved in this series again okay and now so you know, since you are the lead writer of Syndicate, and uh, you know, I did collect some questions from the community, like I've done for the last few years at E3, um, mix of gameplay and story questions. And so, story interviews are always tough uh, before the game comes out because, I mean, obviously there's stuff that you're just not allowed to talk about. There's stuff you don't want to talk about because you want it to be a surprise. But fans also kind of want like kind of hints. So, we'll we'll see. I'll try I'll try to throw a few at you, like really basic ones, and we'll see what <laughs> comes out. I know there's probably a lot you can't talk about, but. Um, one theme I've been seeing throughout all the questions, especially the top voted questions, has just been around the um, the modern day of Syndicate. A lot of people were really disappointed in Unity's modern day, including myself, um, because it's a very passive experience, because nothing really happened, quote unquote. Like you learn about the project that Absurgo is working on, but that's pretty much most of anything of substance that happens. And it's really just Bishop talking to you all the time, and it was kind of just like, ugh. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm kind of curious, the top voted question is from Vistas from Ver Berlin who asks, will we be able to control someone in the modern day part or will it be a passive experience like in Unity? I mean, I really can't talk about this yet because we have a lot of stuff we're revealing in the coming months and so this is just the, the beginning. Um, so you're going to have to content yourself with what has been announced thus far, but um, I will say that there's some cool twists in the game. Some cool twists, like in the modern day, in the game, in the game in general. Okay. Well, no, I mean in the in the in the story that we've been following since AC One. Okay, interesting, great. Um, so we were talking earlier about you know, the team of writers, like you oversee and everything, and you know, like Darby wrote Unity's modern day. Um, that was his pretty much his main contribution to the project. Is who who is writing the modern day for Syndicate? Um, the writer that did it this time is James Nadiger, yes. who is like, uh, he's fantastic, uh, really, um, he worked on all of the Assassin's lore on uh, the internet. Um, for Initiates, yeah. he was on the Initiates project, um, and James also wrote the modern day for Rogue, which has been definitely better received than uh, yeah. Unity, so all that stuff, yeah. He has a mind like a steel trap, so, <laughs> you know, in AC2, um, a lot of the 
facts about the pieces of Eden and were created by me, and he remembers stuff that I don't even remember. Oh, nice, so, nice. You know, he's he's really studied it like a like a course. So okay. he he did some beautiful writing on Syndicate. Um, he you know sent it to me to edit, and I changed very little. Okay. And, and uh, <laughs> it was my response was kind of just yes. Please, more, 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 more. I love this. Awesome. James is really cool. I met him in, at Montreal, and, like, he's on Twitter. He's engages with the fan a lot. He's just a really great addition to the AC family, I think. So that's very exciting. Um, you know, I noticed, actually, there's not a lot of questions in here about the, the historical story, which is, like, kind of disappointing to me since I'm really curious, I guess. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, the motivations of Jacob and Evie. You know, we know that they're born into the, into the Assassin Brotherhood, and we haven't had that since AC one so I find that really interesting um, and you know they there tends to usually be like a one-word tagline for characters motivations you know Altier is duty, Ezio is revenge, Connor justice, Edward infamy, Con uh, Arno redemption slash revenge it's really revenge <laughs> like, even though the head assassins calls him out on that like so I was, I was wondering maybe if you had one of those for Jacob and Evie um, and if you could talk a little bit about that. I mean, there may be there may be something that gets announced later, but uh, I can only talk a little bit about this okay. for now. Again, because we're saving stuff to be revealed. But um, what I will say is that these are very three dimensional characters, and so I think that when you talk about one word taglines, I would say that there probably is not one for them because uh, t they have a relationship together, which is very uh, complex. And they also have a relationship to their past, which is very complex that you'll learn about in the game. And I don't want to give away too much of that, but yeah. um, they have a pretty serious arc over the course of the game too. Like they change a lot. And uh, I mean, uh, you, you'll just have to play it because uh, <laughs> I am, again, I'm really proud of how the characters turned out in this game. I okay. think that uh, I think that we've created real people with serious flaws and also wonderful humor, <laughs> and uh, so I'm excited for people to try it out. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, let's see. I we have a question here from Gokhan Ukar from Turkey. Probably butchered that name. I'm sorry. Uh, will the game have a modern day? Uh, that has been confirmed, yes, uh, before. Can we see Galena, William, Sean, and Rebecca, Gavin? Unity was awful about modern day, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> You'll see some interesting, I mean, it's... Familiar be, faces. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Familiar yeah. faces. You will see some familiar faces, okay, yes. Uh, so, all right, so, all right, so I have a question uh, regarding, you know, one of your biggest contributions to the franchise that all the fans really love for, you know, kind of like the glyphs, the puzzles, um, like the lore, like these kind of, and, the, and kind of the hidden aspects of it too. And so I was kind of wondering if there's anything you can tease about anything like that in Syndicate or... Yeah, there's, there's stuff for you to find in the game that, uh, that's that's pretty eye-opening and uh, again I feel like one of the big uh, I don't know what you would call it but strengths I guess of syndicate is the character writing the characters are just they pop off the page they're larger than life they're really Dickensian and fun and, and that extends to uh, multiple you know, parts of the game, not yeah. just uh, Jacob and Evie's world. So, wait and see. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, ever since AC1, like, one of the things I really love is the, especially in the modern day, like, those moments where you feel like you're doing something you're not supposed to, like, whether it's, like, you know, logging into the computer and you're in Sturgo's cell or, like, stealing stuff from uh, Vidic's pockets or Erudito giving you your teammates' passwords and stuff like that. I always really love that about um, the modern day and... I don't know. I if, <laughs> I want to ask like, oh, can we? Is this something like that going to happen? But I don't know. You'll probably you'll just have to wait and I'll see. I'll just have to wait and see. That's what I figured. Okay, that's fine. All right, maybe just like one or two more quick questions. Um, uh, we have a question from the ones who came before in England, uh, column who asks, uh, "Will we see any new pieces of Eden in Syndicate?" Uh, again, you'll have to you'll have to play the okay. game. It's part right. of the story. So, uh, yeah. Okay, play it. that's fair. <laughs> And 
Sweeney asks, will we finally see Eve or any strong references? Hint, hint, Evie. Or, so maybe if you can't talk about Eve specifically, maybe you can talk about Evie's name. <laughs> um, e no. <laughs> I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. No, no. I, yeah. Seriously, Chris uh, was like, yeah, I no, know that everyone wants to know, but then it's like, you, again, the game is, uh, these are all like okay. exciting uh, presents that you get to unwrap in the game itself. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just because, like, you know, Dead Kings has Lady Eve, and then it's like, oh, Jacob and his sister Evie, link, you know, and it's kind of like... And that's Eve like, Gimo is the head of Ubisoft. And Eve Gimo is the head of Ubisoft, evil lead us. <laughs> right. What's going on? <laughs> What's Eve? going on? Yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Well, I, I think that's a good uh, overview of the questions. Uh, probably about as much as people probably expect, I would think. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and I, again, it's, I it's no I fun, answer but, all of them, yeah. but... but It'll make the game more exciting. Yeah, it, it's no fun to give away like a major spoiler, even though we kind of want it. We kind of don't, I think. But yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so thank you so much for taking so much time to chat um, My with the fans. My pleasure. Anytime. It's uh, it's always great to talk to people who are passionate about the game. Yeah, great. And the fans really appreciate you always answering their questions and uh, digging into the yeah. <laughs> lore and everything. Okay. As much as I can reveal. Yeah, as much as you reveal. Before this I is, explode. Yeah, well, this is the first time we've done an interview before the story has come out. All the other ones have been, like, post-discussion, so it's a little different. But uh, anyway. Well, we'll, we'll be back <laughs> we'll be for back. the post. Yeah. All right, great, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, definitely up for that. Okay, great. Well, thanks again, Jeffrey, so much. Uh, have a great E3, and thank you, everyone, watching. Uh, lots of other cool interviews will be linked in the video description and at the end of the video, so check them out, and see you later. Bye. That's great. Well, I mean, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to chat. My pleasure. And, yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Have a good rest of your show. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that was like the awkwardest outro ever. Can we redo that part? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> my brain just died.